Hi guys, welcome to Motivational Monday. Today's topic is organization is key. So many times I've been asked like, how do you get so organized? Um, how do you stay on track with things? How do you juggle many responsibilities? And for years, I didn't even realize that being organized was a gift. I kind of just assumed that everybody functioned that way. Um, and now that I recognize that it is a gift, I'm willing to try my best to explain how to get organized. So I'm going to first go through why it's important to be organized. For me, organization is absolutely everything. And I find balance between is it OCD, is it necessary, is it helpful? But really and truly, it is. And I know that it takes time to get organized, but you have to take that risk. You have to be willing to take that step back so you can take five steps forward. An example, um, planning out your to-do list, um, creating a schedule that works for you, even to the extent my closet is organized. It minimizes the time. So even with my closet, my shoes are separated. I have open-toed in one section. I have work shoes in another section. And then I have, like, the real heels in another section. My clothes are separated by bottoms, and those are separated by working regularly. Um, my tops and dresses are together, but those are separated by work and regular and they're in color order. So if I'm looking for a particular color that day, or if I know what shirt I'm looking for, I just go right to it. And so that may seem minor to you guys, but for me, it helps me feel organized and it helps me feel put together. On a grander scheme of that, being organized is helpful in your work life. It's it's helpful in having a personal life and creating time for yourself and one of the things that I do is I schedule out my time. So I, you know, you start with your schedule and you start with what's obligatory. What must I do? And if it's scheduled, like if it's like you have to be here from this time to this time, if you that goes on there first. Then you fit in the tasks that need to be done that day, something that needs to be done that week. I look and see where can this fit during the week. And then on top, after that, then I can fit in, when can I relax? When can I chill? Um, what day of the week is going to be my Sabbath? Um, so I try to do my Sabbath on Sundays now. But when I had a flexible schedule and my schedule was all over the place and I wasn't always off on Sundays, I had to pick a day in the middle of the week to have that Sabbath. I had to have that time to be able to say, listen, one day a week, not doing anything out of obligation. I still do certain things, but it's things that I want to do, things that I enjoy doing. And making sure that I find time for myself, putting in time to cook, putting in time in my agenda to go to the gym, whatever it is that I want to do, I firmly believe I should be able to do absolutely everything that I want to do. Point blank period. And I don't feel like anything should have to sacrifice. I don't believe in that. Like, I really don't believe in the notion that you can't have it all. Based on what? Like, really and truly, you have to really think about that. And I know I've said it before, but I say it to show you that you really can have it all. So on top of my full-time job, I also have my business. I also have the responsibility of being a cheerleading coach. I also am very active in my sorority. And I also am active... In my church life, like I definitely make an effort to have an active relationship with God. So with that being said, comes a lot of daily responsibilities. But I'm not going to say no. No, I'm not going to turn down money. I'm not going to turn down business opportunities. I'm not going to not be a coach. I'm not going to be a, not involved in my sorority. That's never been the type of person that I am. And I love God. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I had to. It. I couldn't let it go.
<laughs> and I remember one time somebody was telling me, they were like, well, something's got to give. And I'm like, no, it's all 100% non-negotiable. And I will not let up on any of it. So, but the only way I'm able to have it all is to be organized and to be strategic with my time. Because like money, if you don't obligate your time, someone else will obligate it for you. And that means even if it's hanging out with family, listen, I can hang out during this window. Or we're hanging out, but I got work to do. Like I was talking to my mom the other day and she's like, you always got work to do. Yes. Yes, I do. But on my Sabbath, chilling. So making sure that you're taking the time and it really gives me, it helps me stay focused and it helps me stay energized. So just, um, just the other night when I was finishing up book number two, it's on its way to you. (laughs) Shameless plug. No shame in my game. But when I was finalizing and doing the final edits on my part, I I stayed up well past the point that I wanted to give in. But I was like, you know what? Knock it out so that you can actually enjoy yourself on your Sabbath. Because this is getting done tonight. You will not go to sleep until this is done tonight. So you might as well go ahead and hop to it. And it really falls to holding yourself accountable. So... Now that I've done my sales pitch for why organization is important, let's talk about how to get organized. So step number one, you absolutely have to find what works for you. I know that's not like the answer you're probably waiting for. I'm going to give you a couple of things that I have tried over the years, what's worked for me, what hasn't. But what I want you to do is to explore those options and figure out what works for you. So if your biggest difficulty is time management, what I would suggest is um, getting a calendar that has an hourly breakdown, not just the daily, but the hourly breakdown. Start with your work schedule, start with your obligations, but also factor in the commute time, um, also factor in um, where you must be at certain points. So for me, it was work, cheer practice, competitions, sorority meetings, and church. So having that time and setting it up and really looking at having an honest look. So you can think about the fact that, oh, I had to work between eight and six, but the time between seven and seven was really obligated because I had to go to and from. And on top of that, I also had to get ready for work. So what time did I have to wake up that day in order to be ready for work? What time am I going to do my devotional so I can start my day off with my mind focused on God? What time am I going to get, you said I'm saying like you have to think about all of those pieces to the puzzle and figure out where your time goes. However, I don't have time is not a valid excuse. We talked about this on a previous Motivational Monday. I don't want to hear that you don't have time to do something. You have time. If you have questions about where your time is, Go check out, I don't have time, the motivational Monday. Um, But really have an honest look at where your time's going. Because again, if you don't obligate your time, someone will do it for you. And that someone can be social media. That someone can be the television. That someone can be friends. That could be talking on the phone. That could be family. It could be a number of things. But you have to figure out where your time's going. Just like if you got paid and half of your money is gone, and you have no idea where it went, you might want to figure out where your money went. Same thing with your time. It is the absolutely same thing. So option number one, having a physical calendar that allows you to schedule out hour by hour what it is that you're doing. So after you've done your obligations, the commutes and all of that, then you put in tasks that you want to get done that day. Start with what to do first and kind of work from there. Another thing that works for some people is to-do lists. So just knowing the tasks that you have to do and being able to physically cross those off, understanding that, yes, so today's plan of action, I need to do bop, 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 cool, let me knock that out. 
Um, another way to be organized is one of the things that I learned recently. So me, my mother, and my sister were having a discussion on being organized um, with my little sister because she has her first job. She's serving in the ministry and church. Um, she's growing her um, film directing and editing career that's blossoming. And on top of that, she has school. Um, so as you can see, this is kind of something that just kind of it's what we do, okay? A million things at once is what my family does. That's just who we are. But we were trying to have the conversation with her and help her to understand how to get organized a little bit better so it's not overwhelming. Through that, just like the Generation Z that she is, she said, I wonder if there's an app for that. I'm like, yeah! <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Me, the millennial, didn't cross my mind. But there is an app for it. And I found an app that I absolutely love. It's called Planner Pro. No idea if it's available for Android. I don't use Android. But I found it for the iPhone. Planner Pro. And it's a purple little app. Um, the icon for the app is purple. And in it, it automatically imports your schedule. So anything that I add to my calendar, any calendar that I have on my phone, it automatically imports it there. Step one. Step two, it combines the calendar idea and the to-do list idea. So with that, I can put on my to-do list and I can schedule that task. Because sometimes I have things that I need to do on my to-do list that don't need to be done today. But that gets overwhelming because the to-do list never gets smaller. So when you schedule your task and you put them when they're due, you only really have to focus. You can see the full list or you can see what's due today or you can see what's due soon. And you can also define what soon means for you. So for me, it's under 20, what's due in the next 24 hours. Um, you also have the setting of the next two days, the next three days, four days, five days, six days, or seven days. So anything due in the next week, you can classify that as due soon, and it will show up on that list for you to kind of give you an idea of what's up and coming. If I want to see on a grand scale what I have on my plate, I can look at the full list, but very often I just look at, okay, what's due today? What needs my attention now? And it helps minimize the, the overwhelming feeling of there's so much that needs to be done. And even when I'm looking at the full list, it's done in chronological order. So I can be mindful of what needs to be done when and the reality that some things just don't need to be done um, that far in advance. So, um, but really and truly, you must find what works for you. Step number two, don't be afraid to try a new method. If you hear something that someone says and that works for them, try it out. You really don't know. But if it's not working for you, don't stay clued to it. Caveat, if it's not working for you, find something that does or find something to try next. Don't just stop. Okay, don't just not be organized. It's not effective. The time that it takes to pause and be organized allows you to be more efficient and allows you to be more productive, particularly since I've started using this app. I've been so productive. It's ridiculous. Like many days. Well, every day I've been getting things done on my to do list for that day. Because I don't allow myself to go to sleep until it is done. And I like sleep. So sleep is a great motivating factor. I'm going to get this done because I can't go to sleep until I do. But many days I'm able to get through things that aren't even due yet. And I'm able to finish them um, in advance. And I'm not really plugging this app, but I think it's really dope. And what I know, you know. So in the app, you can also, so when I'm looking at the calendar view, I can see what tasks were done that day. Accountability. So some days I'll look at this task. I'll look at the day, like the his, the past day, and there's like 10, 15 things crossed off that day. Not that I had 10 or 15 things scheduled, but I got 10 to 15 things done. Because again, I also have to factor in my calendar, my availability, and my schedule and things like that. Um, so making sure that you find a system that works for you, but don't be afraid to try something new. 
because at the end of the day, um, you want to find what works and you don't know what works until it's trial and error. I really, really hope that you got something from today's message and we are going to do this each one teach one style. So whatever your favorite organization method is, put it in the comments so that someone else can maybe learn from your experiences, learn from what worked for you and try it out for themselves. Sharing is caring, guys. See ya.